Hello, beautiful people and ugly people as well. This episode, we are going to get practice reading from a file. Now, we've talked about this. It's nothing crazy. I know you guys aren't like, wow, that's awesome. Because it's the basics. But in this episode, we're going to get more practice. So not only are we going to just read like one little thing from a file, but we're going to read a maze from a file as well as a starting position. And we're going to see if it's solvable. So that is the goal. If you have a little bit of experience with file reading, maybe this will be review. But either way, it's going to be some good practice because it's a little bit more complex. So yeah, where do we even get started with this? Well, the first thing you need to understand with I.O. is that the format really does not matter because we are in charge of reading from the file. And if you're outputting to the file as well, you're in charge of output. So you can put it in whatever format you want as long as you stay consistent. And ideally, you put it in a format that's at least somewhat human readable so a person can go in there and, and look at it or modify it or whatever it might be. So we're going to make the format pretty readable because we want people to be able to go into the text file and add mazes to the text file. We're going to start with one maze, but then we're going to go around and hopefully put it in a loop so people can put in multiple mazes into a file and we'll just solve all of them. So that's the goal. We might not get to all of that in this video, but we will definitely get through one maze. And I have no idea what's going on with my hair, so I apologize if it's super distracting. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to store this in a text file. So inside of our package explorer, we can say new uh, untitled text file and we'll just put a space in there and save this. We'll just call it mazes.txt uh, and put this inside of maze solver. txt, not txr, come on. There we go. All right, and we're just going to take this uh, and just cut it and paste it. So we're not going to have it in this format because this has a bunch of Java crap that we don't need. We're just using it for reference so we can modify it to make a maze in a text file. And we're not going to need that inside of our code anymore. And we're not going to need this other one either. So let's just get rid of those. All right. So right now, all it's going to do is it's going to iterate through this empty list and do nothing. <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to fill in this gap and fill list from file, starting with just one, and then we'll learn how to get multiple mazes from the mazes.txt file. So first things first, we need a scanner. So let's see if I can get the syntax for this. And then we want a new file. And then in here we just give the file name mazes.txt. And we need to do some imports. So import file from java.io and scanner from java.util. I don't like this. Okay, we just need to say, uh, we could just say add throws declaration. We're not gonna worry about exceptions. We might do that in an upcoming episode, just kind of focus on exceptions and error handling. But for now, I just wanna focus on reading from the file. So this isn't production. I'm not gonna worry too much about exceptions. And if we get them, we'll just deal with them when they come. So the next thing is we need to basically represent this data. And we ultimately want to get to a 2D array like this. And with 2D arrays, you need to consider that they're not always going to be square. So they can be wide or they can be really long. So that's important because you have to consider both the size for the number of rows and the size for the number of columns. So keep that in mind, that might come back to us and first, we're just going to clean some of this up, get rid of what we don't need. And we're just going to store this as, let's say, comma separated values, but also with a space in there, just because I think that's most easiest to read. And we're not going to put commas at the end either, so get rid of those. So it's gonna look something like this. And then what we'll do is we'll have the star position you could put that in here some, some way, but I think it'd be easiest to just do one per line, just because reading a line and parsing it to an integer is super easy. So we'll just get rid of all this crap and leave it at that. Now, 
let's go back to the maze solver. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little test just to make sure we can get some data. We'll say in dot next line, which we learned about earlier, and it's next line, not has next line. Has next line can be used inside of a loop or an if statement, but we're just going to grab, grab the next line because we know it's there. And we're just going to output this. Running this, you can see we get that first line as a string, and that's beautiful. Now, one of the string methods I talked about in my Java series was split. Now, when you want to do this, you don't do it on the scanner itself. You do it on a string. So we actually need to store this as a string, so you can use another variable, or you can call it on it directly. Once you do next line, because that'll return string, you can say split and pass some uh, pattern to match to. Uh, we'll just put a comma and a space there. I know that will work. If you want, you can put a more complicated regular expression, and I'm not gonna do that, so let's run this. Okay, so what did we get? We got this address, which is what we wanted. I mean, it's not what we wanted, but it is correct because we're printing out an array, so it sort of worked. All right, so what we can do is we can actually store that as an array because it's going to basically take each one of these numbers and split it out into its individual elements inside of an array. So that's like the first step. And I'm just going to start with a string array. So we'll just say items like so. And that should work. And what we can do is we can set a breakpoint after this and we can take a look at the items array just to see and make sure you click debug and not run. And then go into uh, nothing. You just hover over items and you can see the elements right here. So that's exactly what we want, but now we have to figure out how to put them into numbers, so integers, not strings, because we want a, an integer array. I mean, we could use strings just the same, it probably wouldn't matter, but just for consistency with what we've been doing, I'm going to convert them to numbers so we don't have to worry about any typing issues later on in our code. So I want to just basically isolate the rest of our code and just worry about the input, getting it to the right format to match everything else. Now to convert a string array to an integer array, I actually looked up how to do this because I couldn't think of an easy solution besides iterating through the data and putting it in an integer array. And I was like, there's gotta be a more elegant solution or at least something that you could just copy and paste and would work without having to build out a bunch of loops and stuff. And I actually found something. So on Stack Overflow, it's called converting string array to an integer array. Very creative, I know. And here is a good concise way to do it. So it's not easy to really consume and be like, oh, this is what it's doing. But it is easy to put in your code because it's only one line and you can just comment exactly what it does. So I'd say it's fairly readable, at least knowing what it does. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to import arrays from java.util, which will give us a bunch of array methods. And this line, this refers to the string, which, uh, pfft, that's this right here. So I guess we would have to break this out a little bit. So we can say string line is in dot next line. Uh, yes, and then just get rid of the split. Actually, just get rid of the whole line. There we go. And terminate that. I always forget to debug Arr, to stop debugging. Okay, so in theory that works. Let's just, we got that breakpoint there. Let's debug and just make sure that numbers Okay, that did not do what I wanted. Uh, we need a space after the comma because it wasn't matching the format because we have the spaces here. So either we could delete the spaces in the input or we could add the space in the code. As long as you're consistent, it's fine. So I'm gonna put the space here. I personally think this is easier to read than getting rid of all those spaces. But for pure comma separated values, I think you're going to want to get rid of those spaces. So you can look up CSV if you want to know the details on that, but I don't, so I'm just going to do this. Beautiful. So let's try this again. Debug. Take a look at numbers. And you can see we got those numbers right here, so we're good. So stop debugging. Go back to the console. Clear this out. So now all we would really have to do is put this in a loop and do it for each row of that array to make it a 2D array. 
but there's one issue and that is if we want to use a loop we need to figure out when to stop so i think the easiest way to do this would just be in the input put the number of rows so let's just do that so one two three four five six we'll just put a six there yeah it's kind of annoying that you got to do that there might be a better way around that but this is what i'm going to do you could definitely figure out a way to not have to do that but this is uh what seemed easiest for me so go back to the maze solver and we can do a loop so here's where our loop is going to be and each time we're going to add the that will basically put this in the loop and each time we'll add it to an array that represents our maze so to do this we're going to create a maze object like so and we're gonna make the loop and then we'll probably get rid of some of this stuff up here because we'll put it in the loop so we'll say I is equal to zero, I is less than, oh, we need to get that, that number from the text file. So we'll just do that here. We'll say int rows and get in dot next line. And we're going to, oh, why does it always do that? It switches to has next line, it drives me crazy. And we'll parse that using integer dot parse int. And we're just gonna pass that in as an argument. So that'll get us the number of rows. And then we could use that to see when to stop the loop. So we'll say as long as i is less than rows, we're going to increment i. And for each iteration of the loop, we're going to get a new line and create that array. And where is this array gonna go? It's actually going to go in m.maze index i. So the first iteration is gonna be the first row, then the next row, and so on get rid of this extra space and get rid of this comment we don't need. And down here, we're going to take a look at maze. So we can put a breakpoint right there and debug. All right, so we can hover over M and it's going to, oh, actually, let's continue. We gotta step over this line here. I'm confusion, it should stop right here. Let me try this again. All right, we're getting an exception. Yeah, we need to make that array. We need to initialize that array, the maze. I forgot to do that. So after we get the rows, we'll just say m.maze is equal to new int. And for the number of rows, we'll just say rows like that. So that's how we can initialize that. Now let's try running it first, see if we get, all right, we don't get an exception, so let's debug. And I forgot to put my breakpoint back in there. It stops here and we can hover over M just to make sure our maze looks right. So expand maze. And you can see each one of these rows. You can see the values right below it. So it looks like the maze was put in there correctly. And then we can just get two more lines to get the starting position. So where are we gonna do that? We're gonna do that right here. So we'll say M dot starting position start is equal to new position and this is a, a constructor that takes the y first and then the x so for the y we will say in dot next line not has next line and then we'll say it again for the x in dot next line right there and you would have to parse these as well so you can do these separately and assign them to variables if that's cleaner whatever you want. So we'll just say parse int and pass in that and then do it again. There we go. So that's quite a lot, but um, that should do the trick. And then we can check just to make sure we got that starting position right. So we'll debug, hover over M and the start position. We got X is eight and Y is four. That's exactly what we want because the Y comes for first. Y is four, X is eight, beautiful. All right, so we got the input. The only other thing is if you look in the debugging, hover over our object, you can see the path is null. We want to initialize that so we don't have any nulls. You could do that in the default constructor just to make sure we don't have any nulls if you wanted, or you can do it inside of your code here. So all we gotta do is first stop debugging and say m.path is equal to a new array list of type position. Now, when we start adding junk to the path, we're not gonna get any exceptions. So this wants a linked list. So we'll just make that linked list. 
and there we go. So when we initialize this, we shouldn't get any exceptions later on when we say path.push. You can't push to a null list. So that's one of the things when you're not working with the primitive types, you will need to initialize them because they're going to default to null. So let's run this, see if we get any issues. Go to the console and it looks good. We just have to add it to the list. So we'll say mazes.add and pass in M. Run this and you can see we won. So it read it correctly. It did the path and said that it was solvable. Oh, that was a lot. Lots of stuff going on here. And that's just to read one maze. Adding a loop is not going to be a whole lot, but maybe there's some other stuff we can do to clean this up. So that's what we're going to be doing in the upcoming episode. Hopefully you got the basics of reading from input. I think we could make it better though. So we'll try to do that. Now one other thing is like for this new linked list position thing, you can cut this and you could put that inside of your class. Go into maze for the linked list. You can default that to a new linked list. Get rid of that extra semicolon. <laughs> and there we go. Now that's all we really need for that. We don't need to do anything else. So we can actually get rid of this line here and it should work exactly the same way. Run it and it still works. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that was a good introduction to reading from files and how to actually build a program around the input on those files. So thank you. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.